Um, the idea today is that I'm going to do uh, a quick overview of um, what Cryptarium is up to, what we're trying to uh, achieve, and let's um, you know take you through some of the, the key issues um, that we are facing. So let me hopefully um, do a um, full screen presentation. I'm just going to check with my um, with my colleagues that things are uh, moving okay um, because as I say I cannot see myself um, right now on the screen but hopefully um, everything is um, going through. Um, so let's start with a, a key issue that we've we've um, we've got focused on today the token swap. Um, the key issue here, of course, is what are we actually going to do to fix the problem that took place on the 22nd of September, which is the, um, you know, the, the theft of tokens. Um, and we'll go through that very quickly, and I think you'll be satisfied with the, with the outcome. Then I want to take you through a few product launches, um, what we're doing with our partners, some licensing issues. Somebody wrote to me and asked me to specifically cover on the licenses and um, what our short-term plans are. Um, so let's let's start with the token swap. So I'll jump off that slide. So most people will um, who are watching this or at least listening to this will know that um, there was a big theft of tokens. I think it was the 26th of September, and that the um, the whole thing took quite a you know quite a long time to to resolve. So. What happened? Two hundred and fifty million dollars um, were stolen. About ten million, um, ten million tokens of, of Cryptium. We know exactly where those tokens went to. We know the wallet that they went to, um, but obviously the way the blockchain works, we can't actually get our hands on it. So what we are doing is, like many other companies, we are replacing the CRPT with the new RCPT. Um, so, um, sorry, I'm going to stop and let's. I'm told that it's not working. Oh, I am told, sorry. Um, my marketing team said you couldn't hear me, but I've just read the, the WhatsApp and yes, you can, can hear me. So I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna try this, try this loom. This, this program is supposed to be brilliant. It's supposed to, um, show me on the corner of the screen and you know, I'm supposed to pop up but it doesn't seem to, to do that so my apologies I'm going to go back to the presentation and hopefully everything will um, um, will be working okay so yes so we are replacing the old um, CRPT with a new CRPT um, in fact the old CPRT will be called old CRPT um, and the um, the um, the thing will change on the existing um, blockchain. We're not moving on to a new blockchain. It's staying on the Ethereum blockchain. What took us a while to fix this problem was um, we use BitGo as our custody service. And of course, um, BitGo is one of the safest custody services in the world. I think it's the biggest custody service in the world. And we didn't want to take a risk that we created a new token that wasn't um, within the custody environment. So of course, if you've got your tokens on Qcoin, it's Qcoin's custody, it's not our custody. But if you've got your tokens inside our application, it has to be inside our custody. And we use Bit BitGo for that. And unfortunately, um, BitGo um, only add new tokens once a month. There is no way around it. We tried to speed things up, but we couldn't speed things up. So we um, put um, put all our energies into making sure that what we did was, you know, um, as good as we possibly can. So tomorrow, or maybe even later today, we'll make an announcement that all CRPT will effectively just be swapped from the um, from the old to the new. The um, the process will take place in two locations, either inside our own wallet. Um, so if you don't have your CRPT inside the Cryptium wallet, you would need to transfer it into the wallet and we would do an automatic swap from the old to the new. Uh, and if you do that, then we will pick up any of the, um, the blockchain fees that um, take place. We understand the blockchain fees right now are quite high. So if you have to move the tokens in, we will, you know, we will do that necessary um, exchange. If the, um, 
if you do it on an exchange, they will automatically do it as well. You would try and, for example, if you wanted to change your CRPT to a Bitcoin um, on the exchange, that transaction will automatically take place. And of course, this also um, will not apply to the stolen tokens. We know where they are and the transaction from that wallet or, or um, from any wallet that they are transferred into um, will be blocked. So effectively, the people who stole the tokens will get no value from those um, CRPT. They've probably made a lot of money out of the Bitcoin and other things they stole, but they won't get anything out of the um, CRPT. And there will be no real impact on the supply of tokens. Um, so actually what might happen is that some people just don't, don't make this transaction. Some of the old CRPT might just sit there for a very long time. Uh, we would encourage people to make this happen as quickly as possible and we will only cover the blockchain fees for a month so you know we will we will make that announcement if you're going to do it you know do it very um, do it very quickly afterwards it's possible but it, it's not um, it's not desirable so um, that's happening basically right now we'll probably send that message out tonight hopefully um, you will um, all um, act on it and the unfortunate situation um, will be resolved. I also wanted to briefly talk about you know our products and our strategy and you know what we do and and, and how we do it. So um, first of all, just to remind people, you know, when Cryptarium launched, the whole idea behind the Cryptarium was you know let's spend cryptocurrency, and then gradually we realized that not everybody wants to spend cryptocurrency. Many people want to invest it, buy it, sell it, um, exchange it, etc. So. The application and the design of what we do changed quite dramatically. Um, we decided to um, basically to, to create an application where everything that you could possibly want to do with cryptocurrency is done inside our, our application. So the way we have been developing um, our application is to, to gradually add new services that sort of expand the total um, range. So, for example, there's an invest element here. You could say, well, how do I invest? Well, you can buy it, you can exchange it, but also maybe you want to do you know, investment features. And the way that we approach it is we don't try to make one thing perfect uh, and make it absolutely the best the world has ever seen and then move on to the next thing and, and make that perfect and move uh, and you know continually try and make everything perfect. Our vision is that we obviously have to have a very good working app with very attractive features and good prices, etc. But we need to add a range of services. So we add what is often called the MVB, um, the minimal um, viable product. And we throw that out there. We check how people are, are responding to it, um, see what the feedback is, what we could do better. So for example, we've We've launched the lending um, function. We've launched it with a 0% interest rate. And that was purely to see how people react to the whole functionality. Once we get some feedback from people's activities, we can then start to improve it. So I want you to just think of that as when I take you through some of our product launches, because when you have this approach, and this slide here just shows what, six or seven um, dots, but each one of those will have its own circle around it. So you can imagine, what are all the features that you could do with buying? Well, of course, you can buy it with fiat currency, you can buy it with credit cards, you can buy it with bank transfers. You know, there's many different, you know, functionalities. Um, so each one of those has its own circle. So we try to focus on, on completing the first circle, and then we individually focus on, on each of those buttons to try and make them as good as we possibly can. So let's start, first of all, with the, the Visa card. You know, the Visa card was a big, a big thing. It's still um, the most attractive feature when it comes to getting people into the application. You know, what is very interesting for me is that almost everybody that we talk to when we are talking to you know, prospective large scale customers or investors or anybody, this is the thing that you know, gets them most interested. What actually happens is people get inside the application, they download um, the application because of the the visa card and then they do lots of other functions so this this is to me is like the i don't know a checking account in a bank you have to have it and it has to work well and then once this works well then your people will use all all the other functions so we've launched the visa card it's working as far as i'm concerned um, perfectly i've never had any issues with it i'm based in the uk and it works pretty much 
um, like any other Visa card I, I have ever used. We're also um, launching the virtual um, Visa card, which means that you don't have to order the plastic if you don't want to. If you just want to be able to use the Visa card on the internet, then that's absolutely fine. You can um, load it uh, and use it on the internet. And it also means if you've got um, an Apple phone that you can use it with Apple Pay. So I have my virtual Visa card tied to, uh, to my Apple Pay, which is a very nice feature. And we can have a virtual card and you can have a plastic card. In fact, what we're launching right now is the ability to have five. I know that sounds a little bit silly, but you can have five um, cards. You could have four plastic and one virtual or five virtual. It's, it, it's really up to you. You can have five and you might ask, well, what's the benefit of having five? Well, five means five limits. So, you know, if you have five daily load limits of 5,000, then you've now got 25,000. You know, if you have a spending limit of 2,500 at an ATM, well, you've now got a spending limit of 12,500 at an ATM. So the ability to have much more um, than one card, uh, I think is very important. And I also just want to explain to you why virtual cards are, are very attractive. So this is a little story that we, we tell people and um, I just want to quickly, you know, run through it. So. What does a virtual card enable us to do? So if you imagine that a person is in one country, in this example, you know, Terry's in Germany and he wants to send some money to someone um, somewhere else, in this example, um, Lucy's in, in Thailand. If you remember, we have a capability inside our um, application to just do everything through a mobile phone number. We can send um, cryptocurrency through a mobile phone number. Now, anybody who understands what's happening, really it's a little bit of a trick in that Really what we're doing is we're creating a new wallet for the person when they click on the phone link. But nevertheless, it's still a very, very easy way for somebody to, to receive something. So they click on the message and then it would automatically download the application. And then once they've completed um, a very simple um, KYC, they can get a, a virtual um, Visa card and that takes literally seconds to do. If anybody has, has already done it, it literally takes seconds. And then if they have a, a mobile phone, which is Apple Pay, they can use it as Apple Pay, or they can use it um, as at a, um, you know, on internet shopping, etc. And hopefully in the uh, future, they will also be able to use it at an ATM, although that is a little bit more complicated, as I'm sure you understand, trying to use a virtual card and ATM is, is quite complicated in, in many countries. You can't do it, for example, in the UK. Um, and then Lucy, in this example, can uh, you know, apply for a, um, a card and she's able to use it like a normal process. So it's a very um, simple um, solution. And for many of our partners that we are building the SDK solutions for, it is crucial that they are able to send money to people all over the world without... Um, without really any uh, fees or very little fee compared to say doing a swift bank transfer and at, at speed. So we're very happy with um, what's happening with the visa and I hope that um, the more and more of you uh, will use it. Um, there are a number of restrictions, I'm sure you're aware which countries we can and cannot use it, but once you've got the card, if you've got the card, you can use it pretty much anywhere. Okay, so the next um, thing I just wanted to touch upon, and I can't see any questions popping up on the screen at the moment because of the way this is working, but when I finished it, I will have a quick look at the end to see if any questions popped up. So let's talk about Cryptarium partnerships and, and what we've been doing. For some reason, there's a lot of, um, let's say, distrust in the community that we're actually doing partnerships. I don't know why. Um, and several people sort of posted on Telegram the other day when I was looking at it, said, yeah, we're only having partnerships with our own companies. Well, I wish that was true to some degree because we've now done um, something like 15 um, partnerships in the last um, three months. We, we sign up about one new partner a week. I would like it to be more, but we're signing up roughly one new partner a week. And those partners all have their own user base. And why I say I quite like it to be true, it means that we would have 15 companies. Well, we don't have 15 companies. You know, we only have a few companies. So I thought I'd just briefly you know, mention again what we're doing here, because there may be people out there listening to this that says, I know somebody who, who would take advantage of this. So we take the entire application, as you see it on, on the screen here, 
and we effectively integrate it or we can create a brand new application for a third party um, and all our functionality is then integrated inside that third party's application or in that third party's dedicated app with their brand design. Now, what does that enable that third party to do? Well, there's hundreds of companies out there that would love to do cryptocurrency, but obviously they don't know how or they don't have the technical capability or even the finances. It's not cheap to do what we have done. And secondly, um, the very interesting thing for me is it's giving a purpose for some cryptocurrencies to even exist. Now, there are many cryptocurrencies out there where the first thing that people say is, well, what can I do with the token? You know, what, what use is it? Well, when the answer is, well, you can now load it onto a Visa card and you can spend it anywhere in the world, or you can exchange it with um, loads of other cryptocurrencies inside our own application, it suddenly becomes a, a very attractive um, proposition. So that is basically the process. It takes us about four weeks to do an integration um, from start to finish. It becomes more complicated, of course, the more um, differences that the person requires. So if they have a token, for example, that is not on a major exchange, then of course we have to do additional integrations. But generally it's about four weeks from start to finish about two months if it becomes quite complicated. So that's why you won't have seen a significant um, activity yet in the marketplace because some people say, well, if the app was, was out there and working um, like you say, then we would see more activity. Well, they're just starting to, to launch. So here is one that is launching, I think this week. Um, so many of you will know um, Crypto App. It's an app that many of you will turn to on a daily basis. Um, to for various prices. Now, Crypto App and ourselves, we've been working on on this for um, actually for a lot longer than than two months. Um, we were, you know, exploring certain ideas and, and ways that we can do things with Crypto App, and we've got a very good, um, um, let's say, working relationship now. And Crypto App and ourselves. So inside now, if you downloaded Crypto App, it may not be today, but let's say by by Monday, if you download the the Crypto App then what you will see is a button in there that says wallet. And then when you click on wallet, effectively what you see in the screen now is the type of things um, that you will see um, when you download the app. And if you look closely, you can see some of our design features. So, you know, the set, receive, send, exchange, you know, it's pretty um, consistent. So the colors have been changed. The, um, the general design has been changed, but the functionality behind all this is being provided by by Cryptarium. So now I do not know how many of the 240,000 active users of Crypto App will say, "Oh, that's a really good idea. Let's let's download and start putting my money inside this." But even if only five percent, you know, twelve thousand um, users, twelve thousand users in today's world is you know a considerable number. We of course expect it to be significantly. Um, greater than that, um, but nevertheless, you know, it's a very exciting uh, phase for us. And we've got, as I say, about 15 of these partnerships either about to launch or, or just basically signed on in the last um, few weeks. And some of them you'll have never heard of at all. Some of them are, for example, a Forex trader that wants to add um, cryptocurrency. And um, as I said, they will also want to add their own token inside the application. So this is an exciting development for us. And I just thought I would actually share a, a real life case because some people just felt that we were um, exaggerating a little bit where we were up to on this. Okay, next, um, price predictions. That, that's a product we launched this month. It's not really a product per se. It's really, as I said, it's, it's the minimal it's the minimum viable product that we wanted to test out there, see if people are interested in it. Now, this to me is the most exciting thing that we are doing. Now, for many people, they will look at it and say, I don't really understand it. I don't know what we're doing. Uh, but let me just explain. We work with a third party company. The third party company, to, to a sort of a degree as a company we know very well. I was a, an advisor on this third party company. And this company has spent several million dollars with a, an AI algorithm that basically reads everything there is to read on the internet. And it assesses every single token 
and compares it not to whether it's going to go up in value or whether it's going to go down in value, but it compares it to whether or not it's going to go up or down in value compared to Bitcoin. So it may well be that the, the AI algorithm thinks that, well, tomorrow Bitcoin's going to fall, but actually Ether is going to fall a lot. So the algorithm says, in our case, then I think we need to uh, make a prediction that you should sell Ether and hold Bitcoin. And then, of course, the next day it may say, well, Ether is going to um, rise much more than, than Bitcoin. And then it will give a prediction to buy. So if you look inside the application, it really is very exciting for me. So it gives you a predictive... Um, certainty level now it'll never be a hundred percent certain so if you ever see a 50 percent i don't think you'll be able to see my um, arrow but let's just see if you can so if you look at the left hand side of the screen you see ether and it says 73 percent what that means is 50 percent basically means it's like tossing a coin you know 50 percent it's 50 percent likely it's going to go up 50 percent likely it's going to go down the closer you get to 100 the, the more certain the algorithm is based upon millions of pieces of data that next day um, and we measure the day from, I think it's about 12.30 in the morning at um, GMT time, something like that, that the um, algorithm um, is saying buy or sell a particular token. And there is no guarantees in life, but if you measure what we have been testing for the last two years over a monthly basis, it's never been wrong. Now, what that means is, of course, individual days it has got wrong. But if you did everything it said over a month against any of the tokens which it has compared, the algorithm has never actually been wrong. Now, I am stressing here, this is not me telling you that you must follow everything and because I don't want to be saying I'm giving you an investment advice. All this is saying is it is predicting from its algorithm what is going to happen. So this is phase one of a of a product. And we just wanted to see, you know, whether people were interested in. You can do all, all 140 coins. So if you have a particular coin you are interested in, then you can you can measure it. We provide five predictions for free, and everything else is locked. But it's pretty cheap if you wanted to um, if you wanted to access it. But this is really the short term, just to test people's interest. The long term is, of course, to to add a level of automatic trading. And for me, if we added a level of automatic trading, I personally would be quite happy because I'm not a great trader. I don't follow the markets every single day and I don't have time to. So if there's something doing it for me, then I'm prepared to you know, t take a personal risk. So this is the MVP. And within a few months, hopefully the, the next phase. Now, it may not be this quarter. We really need to give this some time to see how people um, react to it. But for me, this... Please take a quick look at it because just test it out for a few days. The only problem is, of course, you need to test it out um, for quite a lot of days because it might be wrong on the one day you happen to test it. So you do need to test it over a number of days. But the type of returns that it is producing, you, they really are significant. You know, it's thousands of percent over a year if you got it completely right. Now, that doesn't mean in dollar terms you've made money. It's just comparing it to Bitcoin. So if you did it, with one Bitcoin at the beginning of the year and it went up 100%, then you'd have two Bitcoin at the end of the year. But Bitcoin might still be less. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so I think that was a very interesting part for us. The next idea was to, to test out lending. This is actually the second time we've tested out lending. We tried it um, once before and we did it through a separate application and we got some feedback and now we've done it inside. So you can get a loan with crypto, 0% interest. Um, the 0% interest for anybody who is obviously thinking about this, and I might say, well, how do you make any money out of that? Well, we don't. We're not making any money whatsoever out of the, the lending right now. That's not the purpose. When we do the MVP, we just want to see how people react. And if we want people to use it, then the best way is to basically not charge them to use it. So it's the same with the AI algorithm. You know, For the first five tokens, if you want to use it, we don't charge you. So that's the best way for us to learn. So the more we learn from it, the more we, we will um, change. But I think it's quite a, a simple concept. I'm sure you've seen this you know, in many um, functions before, but you know, it's had quite a, a lot of, of interest. I don't know the exact numbers, but we've since we've launched it, we've done over a thousand um, loans, uh, which you know, in a test environment, I think is pretty good. 
Um, and then we will be able to analyze the data from that and we'll be able to then work out um, what we're going to do next. Um, before I come on to the special e event, let me talk briefly, and I will be brief because I realize I'm already, you know, almost 30 minutes. So um, what are we doing on a few other areas? So you may have seen that we've done a, um, a, uh, a few additions inside the application, so we can now do um, something everybody keeps asking for. Can we see the burning charts? So the burning charts now are inside the application. Um, we've also um, put a major push um, towards uh, our licensing. We would love to be um, fiat currency licensed right across the globe, but that is a very complicated and, and really expensive process. We started to apply for a fiat currency license at the end of 2019. We started preparing all the documentation, and it's roughly about an 18-month process usually to, to get that. But actually what happened was, of course, Brexit was taking place, uh, and that sort of add a, a level of question mark as to whether the UK was the right market. And the second thing was um, the UK announced new regulations with regards to cryptocurrency. So we have to now comply with a set of cryptocurrency regulations coming out of the UK. And we put in our application for that back in um, the end of the first quarter this year. So that is ongoing. We've had very positive feedback. We would hope to receive that in the next uh, I've been hoping to receive it for the last few months, but we would expect to be receiving that in the next few weeks. Um, and then once that is done, then we can go back to the license application. The, the Brexit situation will hopefully be resolved and we will be licensed for crypto. But what you can rest assured is that through the process that we've taken, we are now fully licensed for all cryptocurrency ap um, operations out of Estonia, which is where our holding company is, the same way as Coinbase, they have a holding company in Estonia. And we want to effectively move a significant proportion of our business to the UK, um, which we believe is a, a better uh, regulatory environment and gives people more confidence. Um, and as soon as we get this um, license approval, it's not really a license, it's a, it's a registration, but the amount of documents we had to produce is just as much as a license. Once that's ticked off, then we go back uh, and we complete the, the license application. Um, and then coming up in the next few weeks, um, let's say next few weeks, between now and the end of the year, I, I keep promising these two products and I'm a little bit embarrassed that I mention it every, um, every time, but we will have a fiat currency capability and we will have um, interest bearing deposit accounts. I've been saying that for a while, so my apologies that you might have you know, lost faith in me on this one. But as I said, you know, when you go back to that very first chart that we had, there are so many products and so many directions that we can take. Sometimes you know, one direction just takes priority over another. So they are on our roadmap for the fourth quarter and I'm hoping that they will be um, achieved. Also, I just want to finish off, let me just check that I am finishing off, yes, um, with a, a special um, a special event. So I'm not actually going to say anything about it, otherwise it wouldn't be much of a special event. But in the next um, two weeks, um, there will be um, an announcement, which I think will be um, interesting. It may even be two announcements, because um, we are working on two things in, in parallel. Um, they are two both reward our token owners and to incentivize our token owners in both occasions. So we are looking to, to, to basically expand the interest as to why people should own our token. So if you remember, I said that for the white label, sorry, the SDK integrations that we are doing with third parties, you know, one of the key things that we can do is, well, we can now spend your token. You can load it on a Visa card. But we want to go a stage further. So we are often challenged by token owners that says, what are you going to do for the token owners? Well, in the next two weeks, we will be doing something um, significantly. Um, well, well, maybe for some of you and others might look at it with skepticism, but I think it's an exciting um, announcement that we'll be making for our token owners and how we can make um, the token a, yeah, an even better um, proposition and why you should hold um, more tokens or why you should do something specific with your token. So very cryptic, my apologies. Um, we're not quite ready to make the announcement, but um, what I will do is I will do a live stream um, a couple of days after we make them the announcement, and then I will explain specifically um, what that is. So 
that is it. So my technology didn't work. I was using the technology of Loom. I sh you should have been able to see my face, but you didn't. And I hope that just listening to me and looking at the screen was, was not too boring. I'm going to escape from this now. And I'm hopefully going to now quickly check on the, um, on the um, Facebook page. If it'll let me and see if there are any um, questions that were coming up. Um, I'm just having a quick look. Uh, so, Cryptium staking and staking coins. Yeah, absolutely. Um, something we're seriously considering, and I think it is something that would um, would be, um, may even be part of the announcement. So, that is um, something we're definitely um, considering. Um, so what are we actually going to do? So if you've got it in a cold wallet, if you've got the coins in a cold wallet, I'm afraid you're going to have to take them out of a cold wallet. You're going to have to take them out of a cold wallet and either put them on one of the exchanges or you're going to have to send them to our exchange. We will then convert them into the new token and then you're going to send them back to your cold wallet. Uh, and we won't be charging you any fees for that. But that's you know, that's the only way we can do it. We can't naturally there's just no way that we can be changing someone's tokens inside a cold wallet without them making an act uh, an activity um uh, right some of these i was an old union pay if i get new visa how can i move my fund from union pay card so we've provided some information on how to get your money back from union pay um, union pay was a, a bit of a mess and we apologize for this we've tried to compensate people as much as possible but you can transfer um, your funds so we provided you with information on how to get your funds back if you've had problems in doing that and i personally also had a few problems it's not you know you as a customer i had to write to um, the provider in the same way everybody else did to get my funds back if you have any problems, however, we still have a very good relationship with our card provider. It was Union Pay that was the problem. It wasn't our card provider. And we have been able to resolve the problem for everybody who has written to us. So please do specifically write if you have a problem. Um, okay, when can you exchange CRPT for BTC in the app for Android? All tokens will be um, exchangeable um, within um, within the application. If it's not available already, which I assume from that question it is, then it is only days away. The idea is effectively every token can be exchanged. And also a, a, there is a, um, an extension of the number of tokens you can use to load your Visa card with. So previously I think it was just BTC and Ether, maybe it was Litecoin as well, but now you can do it with CRPT for example. And as I said, when we do the, um, when we do the SDK integrations, if there is a very specific token that partner we're working with, and there will be tokens out there I've never heard of, but they want to be able to um, load the application, um, the Visa card, then that's what we're doing. We can do that. Um, so I obviously can't answer any personal questions here about you know what happened to me, um, etc. Um, and then of course we've got the usual um, scam coming up on the left-hand side of please send me some Bitcoin, I'll send you some back. When is Visa in the USA? Um, we have um, not engaged a partner, but there is a company that we're working with, Cascade. You can check them out. They're a very, um, very professional organization. And we are working with Cascade specifically to look at the US uh, market. The only problem with the US market is the legality of the US market. Um, we are very comfortable that when we work with a third party, that everything is basically controlled by the third party. Um, but nevertheless, we have to be very careful of our licenses. We do not want to be one of those companies which are suddenly hauled up in front of the SEC for something we didn't realize we'd just broken a rule. Okay, I'm very sorry that my technology yet again didn't quite work and you weren't able to see me, but um, hopefully the presentation was, was better than looking at my, my ugly face. And um, we will post this on the screen and hopefully people will be able to, if they weren't able to see it now, um, look at it later. So thank you very much for everyone who checked in and I, um, I look forward to running another one in a few weeks time. Thank you very much everybody. Goodbye.